Hi, in this video we are going to talk about how blood moves around in the body. The movement or circulation of blood in the body is performed by the cardiovascular system. Now the cardiovascular system, as the name implies, is made up of the heart which serves as a pump as well as the numerous blood vessels spread throughout the body, supplying each tissue with oxygen and nutrients through the blood as well as cleansing them of waste products. At first glance, the anatomy of the circulatory system might seem complicated. The heart appears to be a single anatomical organ, but in actual fact, it is composed of two separate functionally distinct pumps being the right heart and the left heart. The right heart pumps blood to the lungs where blood picks up oxygen and gives off carbon dioxide. The left heart pumps blood to the tissues of the body where it gives up fresh oxygen and picks up carbon dioxide. Now the lungs are usually seen as two organs that is the right lung and the left lung but they basically perform exactly the same function so we shall treat the lung as one big organ this should make our understanding of the cardiovascular system much easier so the right heart and the left heart are separated by a very thick barrier called the septum let's analyze the right and the left heart separately in relation to their respective vessels. The pulmonary arteries take up deoxygenated blood coming from the right heart and supplies it to the lungs to be oxygenated. The pulmonary veins carry freshly oxygenated blood from the lungs and supplies it to the left heart. The heart has an atrium and a ventricle on both sides. The aorta receives oxygenated blood that is pumped from the left ventricle and supplies it to the various systems of the body. The veins of these systems then drain deoxygenated blood from the organs which is then collected eventually in the superior and the inferior vena cava and transferred to the right atrium into the right ventricle. The sequence we have just described starting from the aorta and ending at the right atrium makes up the systemic circulation. So as we said earlier on, deoxygenated blood moves from the right ventricle, passes through the pulmonary arteries and ends up in the lungs. Oxygenated blood from the lungs moves through the pulmonary veins and into the left atrium. And this summarizes the pulmonary circulation which occurs between the right heart, the lungs, and the left heart. Now let's look at the properties of flow and velocity of blood. We start with the steady state flow of blood or steady state blood flow. So, the steady state blood flow is the same throughout any total cross section of the circulation. During each minute of a steady state, the amount of blood flowing out of the right heart is equal to the amount flowing into the left heart. If the output of right heart were greater than the input to the left heart, then blood will be piling up continuously in the lungs. Conversely, if the right heart output were less than the input to the left heart, then blood would drain from the lungs. Momentarily, some fluid shifts can occur for adjustment purposes, but on average, over a substantial period of time, our conclusion is correct. This argument can be applied to any section of the circulatory system. When the average adult is at rest, the steady state blood flow amounts to about 5 liters per minute. Blood flow is the product of blood velocity 
and cross-sectional area. Blood velocity represents the speed or how fast the blood particles move in one minute. So the volume of these particles passing in an area of bloodstream in one minute multiplied by their speed will give us the measure of blood flow. And blood flow is measured in milliliters per minute. Total cross-sectional area of the vascular tree is greatest in the capillaries. By total cross-sectional area, we mean the sum of the cross-sections of all the branches of a similar type of vessel, that is, the major arteries, the minor arteries, the capillaries, and the major veins. So, beginning in the aorta and progressing toward the body tissues, the total cross-section of the vascular tree becomes larger and larger until it becomes maximal in the capillaries. Although each branch is smaller than its parent, the increasing number of branches compensates for the reduction in size of any individual branch. Progressing from the capillaries to the venules, to the veins, and back to the heart, the reverse happens, meaning that the total cross-sectional area of the vascular tree becomes smaller as we move from the capillaries to the superior and inferior vena cava. So as you can see in this chart, this area represents the capillary system. It has the largest cross-sectional area as well as the slowest velocity. We can also see that the arterial system has the highest velocity but the smallest cross-sectional area whereas the venous system has a relatively lower velocity but higher cross-sectional area than the arterial system. So just to lay more emphasis on the point, blood velocity is slowest in the capillaries. This actually makes sense because blood flow is constant throughout the vascular tree. And since the capillaries have the largest cross-sectional area, they must have the slowest flow of blood. So going to the formula we used for the blood flow, that is total blood flow equals blood velocity times total cross-sectional area, we can see that as the blood velocity decreases, the total cross-sectional area increases and vice versa so that the product of the two remains uniform throughout the circulatory system under normal circumstances. This is an essential phenomenon because the capillaries are very short, so the blood flow through them must be very, very slow in order to allow for the exchange of gases and other substances between the capillaries and the body tissues. This also explains why the speed of blood in the aorta is the highest. The aorta supplies freshly oxygenated blood to the other parts or to the other arteries of the systemic circulation. Therefore, with its smaller cross-sectional area, it is able to propel blood at a very high velocity until it reaches the capillaries. Hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. More videos coming up. See you in the next one.